Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in the Pax Britannica mod for Hearts of Iron 4, in which we are playing as everyone's favorite Imperial Britain, but apparently Edward, that good old Eddie boy, announces his intent to marry. Edward, the heir presumptive to King Emperor George V, has approached his father with the intention to marry Princess Helen von Hohenzollern. The relationship between the two has been largely been kept under wraps for the last few years. Few years, however, with the king's health rapidly declining, Edward wishes to ensure his blessing before his condition degrades further. Though George's mental state is in, his in decline, he retains his facilities or faculties enough to at least sign off on the marriage. Despite Edward's hopes, however, the open support of his father continues to elude him, and George lops back into a malaise almost immediately after the conversation. <clears throat> Thus. He did not show it. His father's bout of delusions clearly weighed on Edward, and he quickly left his father's side to announce his engagement. What would have been one of the most important days of his life would, as always, be tempered by his ever-elusive father's emotional distance. At least it's not one of his mistresses, as... Oh, the king's health. Ooh, did I forget to do this again? Um, you guys... <coughs> Excuse me. The emperor's health. The king's health, really. The declining health of the king emperor is no secret among the royal family, or the government. His governance of Britain during the years after the Great War took a heavy toll on him mentally and physically. The last few months have been much harder than anyone could have expected. Complications from his habitual smoking and a respiratory infection have left him largely bedridden, further depressing his mental state. Though doctors have kept him on a strict regimen of medications, he has continued to degrade mentally. Many of the royal family believe his death will come sooner rather than later, and so they have returned to London to be with the king during his final days. We should have expected this. Oh, we can't send volunteers. Oh, that sucks. Of course, right now we are what? We are led by the Tories, the right-wing coalition, supposedly. French Republic falls, new orders risen, stand up at the French border, the end of an era. <clears throat> the last days of Britain, the King Emperor were spent in a musty room in Sand Sandringham House, breaking out of consciousness, only for the briefest moments to ask about the Empire. Each time the nurses would reassure him, and each time he lapsed back into a daze. Day by day, Edward watched his father fall further and further into the clutches of death. Less than a month ago, he had approached him to marry, and now he sat at the deathbed of a father who barely even recognized him. George, for his part, had little to ruminate on, but regrets during his brief pang of awareness. Regrets that he could not be like his father. Regrets that he could not be like the same great man who had steered his state through the catastrophe. He had been more lucid, perhaps. He and his son would have had that common foundation, but his mind was lost in a morphine-induced mist. The hour finally came in the dead of night as George's nurse administered one last dose of sedatives. The sun rose in an empire without a king and a son without a father. The king is dead. Long live the king. Hello. Death of the King. After suffering illness after illness, King George V slept peacefully at midnight, and within a new dawn shall rise, eventually, King Edward VIII shall assume the throne, although the future of the Empire remains uncertain, as our nation is facing a paradigm shift never before seen in the British Isles. And I guess this when the London stock market crash? Oh. It happened, actually happened, and the stock market has crashed, with its value cut in half, and many businesses at risk of collapse. We must do whatever it takes to fix this crisis, or else we face an uncertain and undesirable outcome in the future. The King addresses the nation. Having been officially coronated as the new King Emperor of the British Empire, Edward addressed the nation via the radio. The future nation, he said, is one of progress and modernity. He stated his firm belief in the foundations of the Imperial Confederation and reaffirmed his enthusiasm for the soon approaching Imperial Congress. Though his father did not frequently choose to address the nation directly, Edward has instead chosen to fully embrace the modernization of the monarchy. A further announcement came that he would be conducting regular radio addresses to the country, attempting to answer questions from the public and further build bridges between the king and his countrymen. As expected, the speech saw wide support from the public, though some on the left grumbled about Edward's seeming intention to re-emphasize the monarchy in British politics for king and country, and also with the House of Commons, a primary governmental organ of His Majesty's government, made above 630 two MPs elected from throughout the nation to propose and vote on important bills in order to pass legislation. The current ruling party must ensure that a plurality of the current parliament supports our government. So there's that. Offer concessions, so rate support, lower support, subsidized national industries. Ooh, that's not bad. Uh, offer concessions, of course. Uh, let's see. The Imperial Confederation. The current output, outlook of Imperial reform is neutral. The modern Imperial Confederation is a product of more than a century of reforms, regressions, and compromises keeping the British Empire together. Initially formed following the Acts of Autonomy that created the United Dominions, the Confederation has gradually expanded to transform the Empire into a supranational alliance of nations united beneath the British Crown. With the seat of the Imperial Parliament in London, Great Britain is able to manage many of the Confederation's economic and research affairs, including where and how to manage such budgetary resources. Development in the Irish Commonwealth. Why would we help them out? And the condominium of the Tamil kingdoms. That's this research in the kingdom of Egypt. Oh, that's cool. And then we have matters of our state. As a preeminent global power, Britain has numerous domestic and foreign policy responsibilities regardless of the political situation of the nation. These responsibilities must be handled. Britain has numerous concerns across the planet and on the continent. And with the ties of the world shifting towards war, once again, we must do what we can to safeguard our interests. So there'll be a lot of stuff going on here. So, for the Shidis, the Nicaragua Canal. It was a project, first began in the mid-20s, aims to create a bridge between the Atlantic and Pacific coasts. 
for oceans. While construction is slow with the stagnation of the imperial economy, the British government has consistently reaffirmed the commitment to completing the project. Once completed, Britain will be able to move shipping between the eastern frontier and Europe much more efficiently, as well as levy useful taxes for the construction canals. Put pressure on the construction themes, 50% chance to remove 50 days, 50% chance to work setbacks in Nicaragua. Let's try it. The Royal Marriage of King Edward VIII. Dignitaries from across Europe uh, arrived in London today to celebrate the royal marriage of King Edward VIII to Helen von Hohenzollern, one of the civil princesses of Prussia. Helen's marriage to the British king further cements the ties between the British royal family and Germany. While well, not a member of Germany's ruling family, royal family, the Habsburgs, Helen's uh, descendants from the Hohenzollern family of Brandenburg, Prussia, is no less prestigious. More importantly, the Hohenzollern's Protestantism is much as a barrier to a royal marriage than the Catholic Habsburg. As if the royal family wasn't already German enough. And we're going to do this stuff as well, which is always great. How can we do this when we don't have 10 command part? Whatever. Expand the military academies. That would not be bad to do, but we do have political power, so we can spend on something else. Bioweapons research speed. Um, I'd rather do it on civilian Oh, we can't. Oh, crap. Well, maybe more daily army XP, probably? That'd probably be pretty good, but we need more command power. God dang it. No. Oh, god dang it. Um, we got a lot of stuff here, which is really, actually, really awesome. Can we change anything up here at all? No. Hmm. It's in the focus, so stock crisis. Oh, well, crap. <coughs> Apart from the Imperial Stock Exchange, in London have indicated a major downturn in the stock market and the economy as a whole. Political mayhem in France and political uncertainty in Ireland and Germany has caused for many of the major businesses in Britain to suffer and close down, especially in the iron and coal industries, due to their reliance on German trade. With unemployment rising rapidly, the British government scrambled to try and resolve this economic shock. However, time will tell Britain can weather the storm. Just a slight ripple out of pass. The Great Slump. Holy crap. I guess we remove economic stagnation, but still. Well, crap. Stock market. Stock, London stock panic. What does it mean for the rest of the Europe? Who cares what Europe wants? What, I care what we want. And industry. We start working on some quadrupods, because I actually like quadrupods quite a bit. Well, there goes all the political power we had. Crap. Well, the general election. The general election is finally here, and this election shall decide the fate of not only Britain and her economy, but the rest of the empire as a whole. All political parties are in the spectrum, from the workers' union to the NPP, are bound for power. But with varying policies that may strengthen or shake in the empire, so vote wisely. The crisis deepens. Dear Prime Minister, we were reported to sadly say that the shipping industries across the country has collapsed due to lack of demand for the market of British ships in the empire due to the stock crisis, and the inability to gain the stock to produce whatever demand is left. To make matters worse, this led to massive unemployment in the industrial north of England, Scotland, and Wales, which has practically made Britain bankrupt overnight. Lastly, Prime Minister, this has caused a side effect of shattering the imperial preference uh, system we currently maintain, as due to the Federation's reliance on our central economy, which broke all of our dependencies and colonies, markets, and economies reliance on us. And now it falls to you, Prime Minister, to fix this mess, as we are in the Treasury. Cannot afford to do so, as we have practically no money left. Your friend and colleague, the Chancellor of Exchequer. This is bad. Well, we'll have a general election eventually. Um, how can we spend a political power before losing more? Actually, you know what? Go by one day. Oh, that worked? Ah, that might have actually worked. Nice. Um, support is fine. Well, for now. Uh, yeah, not much else we can do. Anything we can do here? No, we still can't do anything. God dang it. Well, I should have chose one of these guys when we had the chance. We have no command power anyway, so. Uh, who do we want to help out? Let's see what it's like. Can we, can, we, can we do these continually, or can we not do these continually? That's my question. Um, you know what? Let's do... In Bengal and Burma? No. Acadia. United Commonwealth. Let's do that one. Because that's basically what should have been America, but whatever. John W. Davis. I am I man. Righteous segregation? Well, this is bad. Taking up the pieces. I was still trying to train more ships. It still gets more political power. That's not bad. <coughs> All right. What's next? You gotta put down some Irish people, picking up the pieces. Will the Prime Minister acknowledge the fact that his policy of economic isolation and his ignorance of British reliance on German demand has caused this crisis? Cried Major uh, uh, Major Clement Attlee, the major, the leader of the opposition. Prime Minister Douglas Hay just sat disappointed on his bench. Attlee was a fine soldier and would have made a fine Tory, yet he has given in to the whims and wishes of the socialists, calling themselves the masses. How can they not see that his policy of economic imperial isolationism kept Britain from suffering during the last few years? How could they bypass this mere fact? To make matters worse, Haig had heard the murmur of support from his own side of the House of Commons, which deeply troubled him. Haig, although old, knew he could not abandon his sacred duty of ministership, so he rose and spoke. As long as the people of this great nation have faith in the national coalition, then they shall know that we will fix this slight economic ripple like we did the last time under this government. Haig knew that the national coalition was only his way to keep Britain safe, and he intended to keep it that way. At least the coalition is still intact. Well, 
Oh, well, there goes Wu-Chang Re Revolution. But the coalition collapses. Haig sails his aid and advises Edmund and Blackender, and more importantly, his trusted friends since his time in the military. Haig knew what was coming, only Blackender had the guts to tell him bad news due to his extensive friendship with the former field marshal. Douglas. This morning, more than enough of the Whigs in the National Coalition have refused to pledge their support to a party's combined effects to make the National Coalition defunct. Hey, at their dump, set their dump on him. They dare betray him in Britain, Britain's hour of need. Hey, grasped his left breast when a sudden pain, pain forming inside his heart. Hey, remembered the last time this occurred when he heard of the casualties in the Iberian campaign, a scar not yet healed. Are you all right, Douglas? Blackadder asked with concern. Hey, nodded and grasped the table for support before looking at his trusted confidant and murmuring, Oh, for God's sakes. An end to China. Goodbye, China. Tasmanian Tiger extinct. No! Extra, extra, cried the paper boy, the Pica Piccadilly Circus. Due to the collapse of the National Coalition, the king is ordered with advice from his Prime Minister, Antony Adam, who was succeeded to his predecessor, Douglas Haig, over the latter's health complication that a snap general election shall occur. The paper boy was selling well due to the sudden news of both Haig's deterioration in health and Eden's first act to call a snap election to test the British public's support in his new role as their Prime Minister. The paper boy looked around. After a res brief respite of shouting and selling to see London bustle and activity, posters were put up for the WUP in the circus, whilst NPP black shirts tore them down and replaced them with their own propaganda. Conservative speakers rose or spoke at the corner and occasionally fought with the crowd over political beliefs, much to the boy's amusement. But the paper boy also noticed the tense atmosphere in the crowd. Whatever the result, the paper boy knew that this election will decide the fate of Britain in the years to come, for better or for worse. Let's see how many papers we can sell. Look at all that naval XP. Not enough. Not enough, and not enough. No, oh, Grand Columbia. Um, honestly, I don't want to lose too much command power, but I'll keep working on the military stuff. The general election in Scotland. Oh, due to Scotland being the least popular area of Britain, apart from Wales, which is associated with Northern England, the region's anomaly first to declare there's also a general election. Scotland is a major battleground state between all parties in the general election. It's expected that the Tories will lose a majority in Scotland due to the effects of the Great Slump, and then another party will seize a Tory majority. I'll be honest, I don't know which way I'm going to go, so I apologize. The MVP delivers a strong victory. Elections, reactionaries. Um, I want to play it safe for this campaign, and I think so. Oh, well, BIL, huh? We can go radicals. I did go reactionary with these guys. I did go, like, these guys. Did I go. What is this? Despotists. Neo imperialists, despotists. So. Mm, uh, crap. So, I, I, as you can tell on the thumbnail, you know who it's going to be leading, anyways, but you know, still. Um, you know what? Because we have three paths here we have socialists, state socialists, we have the Tories, and then the National People's Victory. Which sounds like a lot of fun. Reactionaries. New British man. I'll do it. Why not? Screw it. Why not? I wanted to kind of. I kind of was actually pulling for the Tories, to be honest with you, but we'll see. Radical Tories, reactionaries. Well, I apologize if we're not going the route you want us to go, but I want to play these routes a whole lot in the future. But Northern England is a land of rolling hills and faith mixed with industrial struggles of factories and workers. The Tories managed to hold the North in a previous election, a paradox in itself, considering how much of the area are poor working men areas. However, the great slump of the North is up to grabs for all parties, including the NPP, where the masses are starting to lose faith in the WP and conservatives. Whatever the outcome is expected that most of the North will elsewhere leads to only one party. Does this make sense? Probably not, in all honesty, for us to do it like this, but my apologies, but we'll see what happens. Oh, hello. Yes. Thousand Man Pirates, worth the cost. The Sana Expedition. Oh, we just go straight to war with the Yemen. Ooh. Oh, heck yeah. 800. Uh, take one, two, three, four. Three, four days, not bad. General election in Southern England. The south of Great Britain is a heartland of not only Great Britain, but the entire empire itself. It's no surprise that the south is the most crucial part of the race, with, with more wealthy areas in London, a capital of the Imperial Federation itself is up for grabs. In the last election, the south was split almost immediately evenly between the Tories and the WUP, with pockets of the MPP, and more conservative and remote areas such as the country. However, expects, our experts predicted that the south will only go to one party, which will pay the way to victory for like a victorious party. What happens if you have a gridlock? 
It's a good question to ask. Results of the elections. Probably all seats have been elected, all votes have counted, and the King Emperor is secretly informed beforehand about the elections of this 1933 election. Britain awaits for the final result. The Empire holds its breath on who the new king in the castle is, and the world watches with concerned eyes with its current and formal ruler. The winner is, the MPP wins the elections. Rotha uh, Latorn Orman strode into the platform with the confidence of a battle hardened general. In front of her were tens of thousands of NPP supporters. Patriots of Britain and the Empire, who hated the Jacobin presence with which grew like a cancer of Britain after the Great War. Orman smiled. She created the MPP to gather anti Jacobins and veterans who believed that the sacrifice in the Great War was thrown out of the window by the, by the talking shop in Westminster, who also known as the House of Commons. Comrades, we have triumphed against the unpatriotic Tories and the traitorous Jacobins in the WUP. We won cheers of triumph echoed throughout the crowd. She let it die down before continuing. Citizens of Britain, we have won against a slow degeneration of our British society, which we fought so hard for, and now is used your first MPP Prime Minister. I uh, should implement reforms to restore Britannia to her full glory again. Rule Britannia. The crowds responded with a mixture of Rule Britannia, Hail Ormond, and God Save the King. A savage smile rose to Ormond's face, watching her, sportive, revel, her supporters revel. Revel in her glory. Britain lives and marches on. Okay, so apologies for going only, like, basically, like, sort of like one ish ideology during the way, but hey, at least we can do some uh, stuff here. The National People's Party, the MPP. Which, you say MPP, I'm immediately thinking, um, yeah, uh, you know, TNL. Oh, the King's Agenda. Group of time. Military favoritism, huh? Mobilize the MPP radicals. Oh, cool. Imperial Congress. Oh, we have more stuff in here. Britain Forever. The Lion's Claws. Ooh. Oh, that's military stuff. Oh, that's good. Um, uh, the 1937 election, okay. Well, London Calling. Uh, we can do that one. I guess we can do that first. London calling to the faraway towns. Now war is declared. The battle comes down. London calling to the underworld. Come out, you covered, you boys and girls. All right, and then after that one, the king's agenda, Jewish Exclusion Act, military militarize the bobbies, the Fuller Harris Constitution, manage democracy, state control press, establish regimes legitimacy. Uh, that actually might be really good to do after this one. Yeah, military indoctrination. Favor the Harris clique. Versus favor the Fuller clique. Ooh. King in the Gilded Age. <clears throat> He's a puppet king. And the Edwardian... Oh, construction. Constitution. Uh, restoration. King's agenda. Look to the King Emperor, for he is a protector of England. Obey his words, his rule, as he rules the Empire in a new imperial glory. He is advice for what he says is true, honor his crown servants, for they obey and show us the King Emperor's words. Rejoice when he walks among us, as we all live in his anointed light, and if we've worse is to come, he shall protect us through his royal prerogative. Well, everyone, there we have it, the Irish Secession War. Our strength as a nation will depend on our upon our economic freedom, and upon our moral and intellectual force. In these, we can become a shining light in the world. Come out, you black and tans. Operation Cromwell. Ireland, as usual, is in a state of unrest. The insurgency of the Irish Citizens Army threatens to bring down the entire Commonwealth, and thus, it falls to us to once again reinstate peace amongst the Irish. A full intervention to crush the ICA should be all that's needed to bring Ireland back into stability. Hey, we meet a good war by the National Recovery Act. The government with the majority in Parliament passed the National Recovery Act of Britain's Relief. The act ensues that the British government will allocate a large number of funds to public employment schemes, while also implementing tax reform and new trade policies to ease the, the burden created by the Great Slump, which will, which will guarantee something. This is about the first major act implemented by the new government to handle the crisis, and certainly not the last to deal with the depression caused by the Great Slump. The act is passed. Uh, we get we lose political power and consumer goods factories and construction speed for 30 days. So, but the poverty rate begin to improve as well as economic health, which would be great. I get support from everybody. I, whoa, I get support from everybody. Whoa, that's kind of weird. Uh, I, whoa, we have 190 political power now. Expand military academies, not bad. We improve by a moderate amount, and this will be a large amount. Ooh, that's not bad. Uh, what else do we have up here? Nothing else for reform. Look, so now we're in 85%, 65%. The Whigs do not support us, and 100% for the MPP by the death of Marshall Hay. It was reaching into the late morning, and Douglas Haig had still not left his bedroom. Whilst there wasn't a strict notice during his policy under the Haig household, the maid responsible for morning duty had thought it was best to not awake the marshal from his seemingly deep slumber. At an early noon, a loud thud. Early noon. A uh, thud had echoed from Haig's bedroom, and in a rush, the maid went to investigate the sound and was horrified to see the marshal ha half dead, lying in a pool of his own urine. What? Immediately, she let out a scream of horror a few hours later after a medical examination. It was clear that Haig had passed away because of a heart attack. Unfortunate. in the British surrealist group. Established in 1929, the British Surrealist Group finally organized their first official showing in London, London to a select audience. During the event, the group unveiled a series of pieces along a lengthy document detailed the so-called doctrine of implicabil implicability. In Britain, the Surrealist movement remains nascent, but since the late 20s, it's been greatly expanded by the 
introduction of Spanish and French exiles. Most notable of these is Spanish painter Salvador Domenech, whose bizarre pieces and eccentric behavior from the, form the backbone of the group's published manifesto, largely existing as a rejection of post-war British culture, art culture, which had shifted towards realism and darker themes as a reflection of the country's academic malaise. Surrealism, rather, rejects the ideas of realism and instead focuses purely on the fan fantastical. The first exhibition of the group has garnered both praise and criticism as more traditional voices in the art world decry the concept as art without meaning. Are we cool yet? And the rise of the swing scene. British propaganda has always emphasized the so-called mixing pot of the empire, and no development demonstrates this further than the growth of the London's underground music culture. Heavy influenced by immigration from the Americas during the Bleeding South, swing music has become a craze among Britain's youth. Emphasizing big bands, trumpets, and string compositions, string, string, swing music, emphasize it loves the local phenomenon among black American immigrants and soon mixed with the cultural milieu of the Great Britain. Taking influence from everything the German, from the German orchestra to local folk tunes and development of swing music in Britain has birthed something wholly unique. Despite the best efforts of moral censors, it seems rowdy kids can't get enough of it. You like jazz? And this one auto uh, completed to the Kings of Genesis, so with bypass. Uh, back on the top. Ooh, focus on the economy and stuff like this would be very important. Back up to the top. The British economy is the largest economy in the world, however. The recent woes to our industry has cost us and the Commonwealth dearly. Already, the British, the Prime Minister has begun a series of uh, economic reforms to bring the nation's economy back to the top of the world. Economic health is looking pretty bad, though. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Um, meet with industrialists. Support from the... Oh. Progressive Tory supporters, too. Meet with industrialists would not be bad. No, that would be bad. We don't really need this one. Meet with union members. Well, they don't support us anyway, so... We don't need that one. Offer subsidies to these guys. Agroponics. Subsidize these guys, which actually would not be bad. We don't really hear yet. Well, we have one command power, like earlier. Crap. It's not good enough. Um... Not really anything that I really want us to do. I should really get more command power. How much do we get every day? Nothing. Oh my gosh. Well then. Well, better use it while we got it then. Mm, where are we at for the military? We're a Great War era military. We need to get it fully modernized eventually. So, we're here. Semi modern would not be bad. Using these guys. Uh, land auction costs. We don't even want to be close for any of this stuff. 150 is so much, though. Once selected, you lose 20 command power. Improve by a large amount. Eh. So we're doing that, though. What else are we going to spend it on? Uh, civilian economy. Uh, as much as we want to do the military stuff. Oh. Civilian factories. Let's do the civilian factories. I, I, I want to do that one. So Now, we're at war with the Irish Assistance Army. Uh, Ulster Defense Force is up there. Ulster is, of course, defending itself. These are guys led by Jos Joseph Devlin. And then we have Michael Collins, too. So... Uh, where are you guys part of? There you go. <clears throat> do the best you can. You should probably do okay. I'm not too worried about that at all. And planes. Bing, bong, boom. Here, we have less than 600, so go right here. Bomb living bad word out of them. Oh! We get that. Anyways, nice. Establish IRI. Well, that's not bad. You get two more civvies. A weekly stability, too. I like that a lot. Civilian factories. Oh, let's do this one. Economic self-sufficiency. Britain, is, is, as an island nation, has a problem with flying financially and resource-wise with a world which has caused a problem that if these supplies were to ever be cut off from the nation itself, would fall. To solve this problem, the new government has decreed, or decreed a policy self-reliance on autarky to tackle this Achilles heel. Cool. Well, even though it costs us an, an extreme amount of stuff there, it's totally fine for us. At least get here to help hold. How many divisions do they have? One to six. Do the best you can, even though, I mean, we have no fuel anyways, but whatever. Ah! Yes. For configuration. Well, we can try it again, why not? I did take time to put guys here, too, so. I love Ireland. Actually, I don't know how the time is growing. I want to play some more, try to play more CK3, but we'll see what happens. The Pact of Thorns. Alright. Sure, guys. Sure. If you want to help us out there, that's fine. And there goes Cork. Oh! Okay, those guys died, and now you guys won too. Resolving the Irish question. The Irish Citizens' Army has been defeated, which leaves the question of Ireland's future within the British Empire. 
The Commonwealth of Ireland was originally established to prevent these kinds of uprisings, but it seems Irish rebellion is an inevitable issue regardless. There have been some proposals on how we can resolve this situation. The first and not most obvious is to simply reinstate the Commonwealth government, albeit with slightly more oversight from the British forces already deployed in the region. The also Free State will be integrated, reintegrated into the Irish Commonwealth as well. Alternatively, it is proposed that it also be integrated into the UK instead. The sectarian conflicts in the region might be better controlled under direct British administration. The most extreme proposal from the Imperial Hardliners is for Ireland to be re-annexed into, British, into the UK entirely, a move that would likely inflame Anglo-Irish tensions even further, which choose carefully as further antagonizing the Irish would likely not be a good idea. You're going to have to get to the UK. Hey, they brought it up, not me. Uh, I'll just say anyways, if we can. England. Wales. Scotland. There's a weird, weird group of isles here. Quite a weird group, I'd say. And how are we doing in the Mideast? We're doing great. Oh, if you don't know about this one too, please go ahead. I've been calling. Choosing the next Prime Minister. The National People's Party have achieved their first major parliamentary success, having formed a majority government with the Conservatives. Ratha Lintorn Orman has been pushed to take the position of Prime Minister, making her the first woman to occupy the position in history and one of the few women in positions of power in the world. Orman shall lead the new government. Neo reaction Neo Neo Imperialists and Reactionaries. Okay. Daily Pickle Party, nice. State capitalism. Break the union. The new economy. It's not bad. Poverty will get worsened, but economic health will improve. First stages of recovery. Ooh, that's not bad. Complete recovery. Ooh. Well, I can't do anything here or here, so. That lion's claws. Huh. Let's see. But an issue to be enough support will gain benefits of this decision. Mental Hygiene Act. This needs some paperwork. New British man. Really, man, March. Huh. National Security Act. Well, then. Alright. UBI. Or IRI, not UBI. Italy requested to join the Imperial Powers. With the Italian Civil War now concluded, Ferdinand III has requested that Britain allow Italy to formally enter the Imperial Powers Alliance as a major ally of importance. Of course. That was easy. Well. I like savings, but I, uh, I like stability too. Establish your IRI. The recent crisis, economic woes with political strife has left many parts of the UK abandoned and out of touch with modern British standards. To fix this problem, the Imperial Reconstruction Initiative, the IRI, shall be created to help construct, modernize, and forge new um, a new modern British landscape which could grant peace and stability across Britain. And then we get more tactics. Well, we're not even having close to finishing that stuff, though. As a train of unknown tribes and Brazil. 316 days. That's actually really good. I want to get that done as fast as possible. So, when we get this stuff done, so whenever it happens, it will get it done. So be it. Still in 1933, though. <clears throat> uh, better MREs. Might as well. Looking pretty good. These guys are 18 cowboys with support artillery and, art and engineers, which is pretty decent. Uh, occupied territories, civilian horses, Pax Americana, such records. Toad anti tank. It's fine, you can do that real, real quick. Deployment, district forces. Route moving three would be okay, but this is probably better. Duplicate. Garrisons are on max, which is awesome. Officer recruitment campaign, huh? Oh, I'm best in Yeah, that's fine. Go and do that too. Economic self sufficiency. So that's your IRI. Very good. We're not even close. You might as well do it. Why not? More modern military. Oh, look at that. Thanks to a military exercise, we now have a better military. Our military modernization will increase. Because I'm part of the interwar era. Okay, so we went from Great War era military to this one. Our research speed goes up. 
It was, it was over here. At least their speed goes up. And actually, we lost 5% more defense. We got more attack. 50% more attack and 50% more speed. Alright. Oh, Manchuria. Music redefined. Cool, cool beats, kids. Professional construction teams. Okay, 276. Sure. IRI. Um, let's keep going this way. Paralyzed Socialist Menace. The Socialists the true foe of Britain and the Empire. Oh, he died in the trenches. Uh, whilst we died in the trenches. They were giving her jobs and uh, they, were they were giving our jobs to the colonial subjects and foreigners. While we returned from Iberia, the Socialists were then saying that we should pay for health care for a generation that don't care about us. Now that we're in power, we should make a few house calls to the left-wing scum and the support base to show the spineless cowards they are. Unfortunately, your efforts to put pressure on the foreman to hurry up the construction of the Nicaragua Canal backfired. Attempting to meet the increased demands, the foreman of the canal made a series of errors leading to damage at the construction site and the death of a several few workers. They have since requested that we not attempt to interfere further with the work projects, so as to prevent any further accidents from a sloppy workmanship. Oh, that sucks. Well, I tried it. It's alright. Can't win every time. Are we just out of guns? Nine guns. Infantry rations. Formation of the Scottish Independence Party? Ever the most unruly part of the British Britain proper, the various political parties in Scotland have long agitated for varying degrees of independence or autonomy from Britain. Just today, members of the Scottish Independence League and the Movement for Scottish Autonomy announced a merger to form the Scottish Independence Party, or SIP. A big, big Ten coalition of Scottish conservatives, liberals, nationalists, and progressives, the SIP is currently a dysfunctional best. What is notable about this is that the party unilaterally agitates for Scotland, too, at the very least, be granted Commonwealth status and a seat in the Imperial Parliament. Naturally, such an idea has seen pushed back from the English political scene, though some radical elements of the WP have argued in favor of the Devolution Party. Bold policy. What a joke. Keep building them civvies. Also, we're not building any ships right now because I forgot about them. Oopsie. Because uh, these weren't very good. No radar yet. Back. And that's, that's alright. Make a call. Go with two. Oh, actually, let's see. Close out of that one. Heavy ship hull. Not really worth it. Cruiser holes. These are already lights, which is fine. Um, if you want torpedoes, fine. Uh, even though I would honestly prefer death charges. So instead of that, death charges and get another gun here. 17 we have. You go to two yet? No. There we go. There you go, just in case. Anti-tank. You guys will honestly probably need some after we get everything else. It's going to take a while for us to get to there, but that's okay. The IRI. Because I want to see how far we can do that. Because right now we have 50.24%, which is pretty good, right? <clears throat> Mental hygiene. Please. Stuff. Heritage of policing. I kind of like that. I also like the new British man as well, though. After the Great War, the British man lost his touch in society. With economic depression and an uncaring state, the idea of manhood slowly lost its ideals in this new, distorted British society. Now the MPP government must step in and promote a new British man. The new British man shall be encouraged to be physically fit, a natural father, and the head of the household, while also pushing himself to be like the imperial heroes of old. America divided, oh boy. Alright, so let's save our political power for now. 85, 65, 100%. Way ahead of time. Sport equipment wise, armor trains way too ahead of time. Armor is okay. Yeah, you know what? Let's get some light tanks. Because we'll actually probably use those. We'll see. Actually, you know what? Maybe we won't. We probably actually won't even use tanks. Let's so screw it. Let's not use it. Because we've got quadrupods, anyways. Uh, augmentations? Sure. We'll do that one instead. So, this part of the right coalition. So, this is 50, 66%. It's fine with us. Dead March West. Huh. Oh, the California Republic. Oh. Republic of Texas. What are you up to? Dixie Divide? I like that. First step of May. Taking power as the first MPP Prime Minister in history would be one thing, but Ormond wouldn't have settled for just one history-making move. She's not the first woman to take up the office of the Prime Minister. The irony of a patriot doing this over a progressive was not lost in her or her cabinet as the draft of plans began undermining the nascent Union Party. 
While most merely spoke of denouncements and defamations, there was an unspoken plan amongst them that was far more of a violent variety. The black church paramilitaries of the party were free actors that could be thrown under the bus whenever necessary. All they needed was a little push to go from mere supporters of fanatic patriots. History will what we do will be what we do here to be necessary. Or whatever it is. Cool. Hundred percent. They do not support us. Radical tourism, radical liberals, conservatives. I mean we should be able to pass whatever, right? Parliament will vote. And we have enough support. I kind of want to see the police act is like. A few forms can be conveniently lost in government bureaucracy, and sometimes things can just go for missing from stockpiles. The Police Armament Act. Crime has been growing due to economic woe and criminal, criminal Jacobin activity against our government. Directed by, we should follow in the steps of the American Commonwealth and give arms to Bobby to make sure they secure law and order alongside a rule. I guess. Oh, support the Qing Empire. Oh, okay, they're at war. I guess we could do it if we really wanted to. Oh, they have negative 100% stability. Jesus Christ. Qing Empire, huh? Oh, shit. Oh, the Kings have volunteers. What do you have that? No? God dang it. War artillery is very nice. 33 still, though. I'm going to do that, too. Electronics. Oh, I could do that, but let's not do that yet. Kudo is actually not bad. We're actually really good on Kudo, actually. Well, keep training. Imperial Reconstruction Initiative. More modern military? Yes, sir. Wait, are we on full... Fully militarized. Awesome. Actually, really, really good. All right, then. Spino Sword debut in Algiers. That's kind of cool. Anything down here? Oh, we actually do stuff here, too, if we really wanted to. So, what did we do earlier? United Commons. So, we can keep doing these again and again and again and again and again. So, we're just neutral to that. 40%, huh? 45%. If we get it at 50%, will, that, will they support us? Well, the Whigs don't like us, so it doesn't really matter. Ma matter? Matter. Infantry. Yeah, I like that infantry stuff. Defense is not bad, but infantry is what we're mostly using, so let's go with that guy. Well. So, does anything happen? I mean, 51%. You know, just in case, let's save just in case to see if it goes well for us. If not, you know, whatever. Uh, but I'm not really sure if we can see anything like that. Economic health is really bad, though. Okay, so I'll do this one. Let's go back over here. Uh, where is it? Economic health is getting worse. Imperial economics, huh? Well, I guess mental hygiene act. Uh, we need all this stuff, so... Uh, the British government now finally passed further legislation for those who were considered mentally ill to be treated and retrained for a new English society. This has come to pass after the investigations. Um, <clears throat> well, you want to do this? Please go ahead. Uh, after investigations by the government have seen that those who are considered Jacobins or hardcore socialists are now mentally ill, which will pass the Mental Hygiene Act to contain and help these poor souls who have been manipulated by Jacobin elements. As we should. It's almost 34. Two three days left, not bad. <clears throat> I don't mind doing this one again. Just build. Maybe we want to make some of these eventually? Yeah, sure, why not? Quad pods. Oh, the Tonkin campaign stalemate. It seems we've been able to break the lines of the North Vietnam Army, and they're also unable to break our lines. Wait, what? That's. That's clear we can no longer continue our campaign. When did this happen? North Vietnamese territory and we'll have to leave them, leave them to be as not to put too much strain on our finances because of the war. You can win this round. North Vietnam. Draw troops. What? Force the mandate. Oh, screw that. We're going to war. Screw you. Well, how do we know? What? Uh, curious reports reach the office of Sir John French. 
Commissioner of the British Expeditionary Force in Palestine. The report delivered by agents of the Imperial Security Service and contained a report. Series of reports by Jordanian and Palestinian travelers that a white man traveling alone in the Jordanian desert has been spotted on multiple occasions. It went on to indicate a high probability that the man being referred to may be the missing British Colonel Thomas Edward Lawrence, though it cannot be confirmed this with absolute certainty. Lawrence vanished the, from his posting in the Trucial States following the end of the hostilities in the Great War. The reason for his disappearance is unknown. The colleagues have tested to the ISS that his service during the North African campaign, the Arab peacekeeping operations, may have pushed him over the edge. Lawrence's fascination with the Middle East is well known, and the ISS agents have been combing the Arab kingdoms for almost two decades in an effort to locate him. If this leads to be believed, Lawrence may have been hiding beneath our noses the entire time. Our ISS office in Jerusalem was advised we dispatch an agent to Jordan to locate the un unidentified man, plus haste, as we may lose our chance to find him while with the brewing chaos in the Near East. Dispatch an agent. The more important things we're about. Me and the dunes. You are not going to beat us down here. Well, take you and you. And you. Our motion probably failed. How? A fortune proposed act was completely butchered. It didn't make it to the scrutiny phase, but many were quick to point out the act's many flaws. The entire the session effectively became an utter total embarrassment for our party as many cross ventures. Uh, laughed and heckled the proposed changes put forward by the act, even earning a quick chuckle from some members in our own party. All I can do is hope that we never make this mistake again. <coughs> Where can we see that? Is there anywhere we can see that? We've got Land of Hope and Glory, post war pacifism, overconfident general staff, extraterritorial dividends, head of the British Imperial Confederation, gradual recovery from the crisis. I don't see anything here. How can we. Well, what's the point of that if you can't do that? What? I mean, House of Commons, but. This doesn't tell us enough here. 100% they have complete support. So then, what, what else? Like what else? Am I missing? I must be. Some, must, am I missing something here? Because I see nothing here. So, and we're gonna get it passed no matter what. So, yeah, that's not very good. That's really, really not good. So let me do, do some funky things. Ah, our motion in Parliament succeeded actually. Today the benches in Westminster were in jubilation as the government's recent act successfully was given the green light by the House of Commons. While some compromises were made, the act managed to remain largely unscathed from its original purpose. No, the process of actually enforcing the act begins but the British government can breathe a collective sigh that the hard part is over. Good. And it's only because I made sure we got the Whigs to support us because the Tories don't. Hey, Tories still support us. Uh, Tory progressives. Progressive Tories don't really care for us, which does kind of suck. But as long as we have ours, our party, the Whigs, and the Hague Tories will be okay. The Nicaragua Canal is completed, though. After years of diligent work, the Nicaragua Canal has finally been completed. Too thick and thin, the British support for the project has been at long last paid off. In a lavish ceremony, British nobility and corporate officials celebrated the completion of the canal and the splendor of the empire's economic might. The announcement was soon followed by the formation of the Nicaragua Canal Company, a state-managed imperial corporation which will be responsible for policing and maintaining the canal's facilities. The occasion has not been entirely without controversy as the Nicaraguan government voiced displeasure at their minimal role in the NCC, which will see them see them very few of the dividends for the canal taxes. Some more radical elements of the government outright denounced the British and have avowed their efforts to take back supposedly rifled Nicaraguan land. Controversy still surrounds the canal even beyond this, as many British reformers argue that the use of poorly paid locals and African travel workers, the latter which received almost no pay at all, save room and provisions. <clears throat> Nevertheless, Britain has acquired yet another powerful economic chip in global geopolitics. Alongside the Suez, Britain has a tremendously powerful monopoly in global and inter empire trade. Excellent work, chaps. Even progressive tourism will increase us here, but... Um, the Union, support, no... No. Uh, opening the 1934 Imperial Conference. Oh, boy. <clears throat> after the Washington Rebellion in America was put down, and the establishment of the Imperial Parliament after the revolt, which soon transformed into the Imperial Federation, Britain has seen it fit to call roughly every four or five years representatives from all dominions and mandates to gather and discuss the future of the Empire. The 1934 Conference will be like no other, with Britain staggering from economic hardships and, and even a more assertive American Commonwealth and the Federation's affairs, which many toppled Britain's hegemony over the Empire. This has naturally made of the 34 Conference a more faithful decision for the Empire instead of a simple checkup that the previous conferences shared. Simply, to simplify imperial politics, two leading factions have formed two factions. Neo-Victorian and Enlightened Imperialist, in which the former believes in the centralization of the Empire under Britain, and expanding white mandates, and the latter believing in a more liberal era of the Empire to benefit all British subjects, white and black, and to also split imperial power throughout the Federation. Let's begin, shall we? Remember that, please go ahead. Debates on Dominion Reform. 
The question of Dominion reformers come up in the conference. Many natives and other older Dominions, as you see, believe that due to the geographical distance and cultural differences that the mandates should govern with more autonomy and power so that each Dominion can deal to their popular certain needs. This has naturally caused anger to the old guard of the Empire, while many white colonists in the new territories such as Africa cite that the decentralization or decentralizing uh, the Imperial Federation away from Britain will be no different than independence. Well, uh, while also white colonists fear that by giving direct power to the mandates, the governing authorities might favor the natives over the Anglo settlers. Whatever the case, it is up to the British Prime Ministers to have them say to have the say on the final Dominion reform. Should we should more strictly follow the mandate to the Crown? Should we grant autonomy? Uh I'll go with that one. Everyone would be worried about debate Dominion reform, let's go ahead. Debates on economic reform. <clears throat> Naturally. Uh, Imperial economics or economics and finance came up in the nineteen thirty four conference. The enlightened Imperialists wish for the mandates and dominions to be self-sufficient and away from the pillaging hands of London so that they can stand on their own two feet for the Empire. The old guard have countered this with a logical point of trade. The Empire was built on trade and by simply throwing away the resources from the colonies needed for the factories in London and the United Commonwealth of America, then what's the point of having the Empire in the first place? The debate has been quite fierce and the only deciding vote from Britain will finish the result. Either deciding the Empire will revolve around Imperial trade and the City of London or being a more self-standing establishment for co-equal community within the Empire. If you're going to about this one, please go ahead too. Debates on the military. The last topic to come up, and most likely the most important due to both old and new threats popping up, is the Imperial Federation's stance on the military. Traditionally, when war was to break out, Britain would raise regiments from all parts of the Empire alongside its standing army to wage war, but after the Great War, and many parts of the Empire creating their own standing armies, such as the United Commonwealth of America's Royal Army and the Kenyan Security Forces. The old guard have argued that there should only be one army, which matches with the Federation's motto of one nation, one king. However, the Allied Imperialists have argued that having such a mandate, having a specialized military to fit for a certain military role, will allow for a more efficient and effective fighting force around the globe in defense of Europe. Of Europe or the Empire. It's your choice, Prime Minister, to decide the matter and out course of civiliz civilization or Empire was the last debating choice. Choose well for the fate of civilization hangs in the balance. Focus on establishing a centralized confederal military? Sure, why not? You want to put that one too? Please go ahead. Uh, losing some paperwork. <clears throat> The black shirts are our protectors that are aroused and bodyguards to our MPs and other officials. With the party securing power in Downing Street, it is only natural that we secure arms for our black shirts for protection. All we have to do is lose some paperwork and do some just some a quartermaster papers and proof and poof now we have the arms for black trips whilst no one else except ourselves knows what's going on cool so that's great the Nicaragua canal is finished our commitment to the far east if you want to that please go ahead oh boy our little subjects into the dark continent if you want to that please go, ahead. please go ahead our wayward sons in america if you want to that too please go ahead and it looks like we've got a lot of focuses but a lot of them just autocomplete okay so now we're up here cool New Unified Currency. Pound Sterling. Strength in the Muscle Jungle Work. Reinforce the Pearl Paper. Pearl River. Pearl River. Huh. African Authority. Well, we got a lot to do. Moderately conservative right now. Alright, well. Okay. Hey, the dudes are showing up. Nice. Be offensive. Alan Brooks, I think they're yet. Go in and have fun. Squeeze him to death. Hey, the motion problem succeeded. I wonder why. Um, we're going to that. Please go ahead. Yay. The vendors associations, they still support us, which is great. Um, Hague Tories, yeah. I want to do that, but for 50 political power, that's just not worth it. Theorists. What else can we do? We can help our people out, but still. Uh, 150 more civvies. Yeah. That's definitely one we want to do right now. Actually, we have to be what for this? Civilian economy. Oh, we can go. Oh, crap. We should have gone here. Crap. We'll do that next. Ah, the Vietnamese have been pacified. Nothing but a few rice farmers, that we would say. The future of Indochina. Although we've defeated the North Vietnamese Rebellion, we cannot allow the people of Indochina to ever have more inclination or inclination to betray their British overlords. To avoid another potential uprising, similar of cabinet or suggesting that we grant the region a greater level of autonomy and representation in the Imperial Confederation, or we could just stick to the old ways of things. Partition of the former French colonies and clan states? They'll remain under our direct administration. By diddly god dang it, they will. Good luck. You got plenty of manpower reports from the mandate. Uh, oh, actually, we read this one before earlier, too. So, dispatch an agent to find him. 
Not bad. I kind of like this. It's fun playing as the UK. Kingdom of Germany, where are they going? Oh. Ah, him, Elizabeth I. Bunch of liberals. Jacques. And Nicholas II is still struggling over there too, but whatever. What else is new? Um, wigs, wigs, wigs. Ooh, nice. I'm meeting the dunes. Almost after we could travel, IIS agents arrived at the campsite in the Jordanian desert, where it was believed that Lawrence was hiding out. Evidence of recent hab habitation was found, particularly several open cans of food and recently snuffed out campfire. Where the agents could investigate further, the cocking of a pistol drew the agents' attention to the flank. There, masked in amber glow of the setting desert sun, stood T.E. Lawrence. Though at first he was hardly recognizable, dirty, unshaven, and draped in Arab garb, he hardly looked anything like the file photo the agents had been given. I figured you people would come looking for me eventually. We're with Imperial Intelligence. We've been asked to bring you in for re I'm not going back now, right after we did. The agents took looked amongst one another. And after a tense silence, the head of the operation spoke. Hand looking over near his revolver. We still need the old desert ghost back. Just shoot the crazy dude. Um, I don't know. Let's see what happens when we do this one. I want to. I want him to come back. Can we make him come back? I want him back. Oh boy. I hope we made the right choice. If not, I will do some funky things off screen probably. Come home again. Oh. oh, look at that. There was a long silence after the agent spoke, punctuated with a deep sigh from Lawrence as he lowered the pistol. It took a long look out of the desert wastes that surrounded them, the wind sweeping over the dunes like a never-ending ocean of dust. The pistol found its home in its holster. Ozzy Mandias demanded his service once more to protect his empire one last time before it slipped from his fingers and into the dustbin of history. It didn't matter if it was King Edward or King George, the emperors were all the same. Still, in a way, he figured he owed his homeland some courtesy for not putting him down like a rabid dog, sometimes a hon hound gone wild, still has some use left in him for his master. Oh, one last ride, he figured, one last ride for the empire. One last ride, and he could finally be free, spilling blood just this one time more in exchange for freedom. They left the next morning for the board of the mandate, and though Lawrence couldn't shake this pessimism, he did have to admit it would be nice to have a proper bed again. One last ride for old time's sake. Alcan luck. Hey, T. Lawrence. Oh, look at that. He's got an eye patch. He's a brilliant strategist and a desert fox, which is very fitting for him. Very, very fitting. Losing that there paperwork. All right, pro promoting economic, imperial economics. In this world, one thing counts in the bar in the large bank accounts. However, expansion from the empire has. Seeing that much of the profits from the early days of expansion are now being wasted on investments to areas of the empire where the effing savages don't work. To remedy this, we should take back the money a bit more and invest it on the deserving white dominions. We can actually make a difference and then maybe give a little back to those ungrateful savages. Sometimes we get a steal from a savage or two. We should be able to get this right. Okay, so that would be good. And then we'll also do what? Black ship department? Million man march? More war support would be kind of nice, actually. And more, a lot more political power, too. Build up our urban base. Uh, English chauvinism. The Anglo and his fellow Celtic brothers built this world and we should be darn proud to do so. From now on, let the cross of St. George fly on every street of Britain. From now on, let the school kids know what we've done for this world and why we are the imperial shining light saving the savages from themselves. Let no man be ashamed to say I am an English man for being English is to win the lottery of life. God save our sacred isles and let those traitors who are ashamed to be English go to heck for their treasonous thoughts. Awesome. Keep building ourselves up, actually, for this. Go up there. Sales Force, no issues so far. No, not really. Laza Affair, 14 hour workday, noticeable poverty, underperforming economy, fully westernized. Huh. Well, that's good. Officers, ooh. Political loyalty, huh? Which we might actually do best of the best, though. Hmm. Bold attack, academic scholarships. Ideological loyalty. That wouldn't be bad either. Where are we at? Volunteer only, huh? Nice. Oh, there goes the Empire Ching. Well, there's nothing we could do. We didn't have any guns, and there wasn't very much we could do about that anyway, so. Not super concerned about it. That sucks. Rashidis. Oh. Well, we could have helped them out, I guess. I guess we could send volunteers if we really wanted to. They have no planes, though. Here, give me your horse, boy. So, it is what it is. Uh, build up urban sport base. Uh, I'll do some black shirt uh, deployments first. <clears throat> 
We're out of ears, which seem hostile to our rule in areas where the local NPP units need help. I've seen the party start deploying black shirts as a show of force and a boost of morale for overwhelmed black shirt units. These men are former military men who are willing to die for the cause, and Britain so let the socialist menace fear our wrath that they do engage with these men, especially if they have, we have guns, and of course they don't. Good. They declare war on Ma Cleek. Oh, we actually like the McLeek quite a bit. Cool. Well, good luck, McLeek. Oh, we can do this. Wait, why can we do it earlier, not now? Uh, what? Hey, hey. Um, armor? Lots of flag assumptions, not bad. That's actually pretty good. Well, we don't have too low with this, so. More defense. Um, Agroponics. Which one's that one? Um, requires some weekly manpower for upkeep, but keeps me overall population growth. Yeah, we can do it once. Why not? Something a little different. Yeah, we'll do that too because we can. All right. I'm glad we got T. E. Lawrence. Bernard Montgomery. Let's see what we can do. Construction 2. Excavation, why not? And of course, we're going to do black shirt deployments and whatnot, too. Well, are they on the line? Yeah, they are. Okay. Get these guys down here, too, and we'll see what happens. Oh! Is there anything we can do about this? Sheedies, of course. British African Authority. Join your wars? No. Oh! Okay. Well, crap. We just sent a guy down there. Well, whatever. Well, we won. There we go. Now we got it. Great. No war sport, but whatever. Don't talk about that. Um, wigs. Uh, we're doing all right. Um, let's build up our urban support base. Our main support has come from the countryside and towns of Britain where the citizens are culture conservative, and they've always been. To win full public support, we'll have to begin rallying support in the more urban areas, such as East End of London, where the working class are the main chaps there. This will be a difficult challenge to do with most of these proud British men. Uh, are part of the WUP, however, we must secure the popular mandate of preventing transfer plans to actually work. Cool. Good job, guys. You did a fantastic job. -o. There we go. Great Balkan War. Oh, boy. There we go. That's what we like to see. We are the industrialists. Oh. Union members. It's just all about this stuff. I guess there'll be nothing else. 95% is working down good. Common Republic, huh? We don't like Jacobins. We hate Jacobins. I don't like any of these people. Despot Despots are okay ish. Conservatives are okay. We're reactionaries, so. Well, these, these guys are Jacobins. Jacobins. Can we help support one side here? No. Nordics? Huh. Well then. Why are the, the common republic this is a Jacobin type of thing? But uh, Balkan powder kega. But I don't know why they're allied with Bulgaria. Despotists are okay. Reactionaries, which is reactionaries, man. Which are liberals over here. Of course, they're neo imperialists over there, too. We don't want to support. Um, hmm. We don't want to support neo imperialists. I guess we'll help support these guys, maybe? 
Are you going to? How many plants can we send? Yeah, screw it, whatever. Fighters and tactical bombers. There we go. Oh! Well, Jack and Ben's god dang it. Papa Jack and Papa Ben. Well, just get involved, why not? Well, it's because we can. Alright. Get some army XP here, that's what we really want. Over here, we could probably honestly just start killing these guys off quickly. Sorry, T. Lawrence, I sent you to Arabia, but whatever. The Million Man March. Across Britain, hundreds of thousands of black shirts flooded the streets in the morning of the largest political demonstrations in recent history. Police shackled by engagement and rules issued under the Ormond government were forced to sit idly by as the black shirts marched. A strictly peaceful march, of course, but many understood the implications of the interference. <clears throat> Ormond herself issued a little statement beyond her appreciation for the black shirt support. When asked about how the black shirts had acquired military grade equipment, she merely stated that perhaps they were assisted by free actors and that she would make a formal inquest into the issue. It didn't matter if they believed her or not. Nice. Expose the true socialist plot. Let's see what scum these socialists are to the working class when we show them how much they wish to crush and destroy the values of burden which many of us hold dear. Only then will they look to us for their salvation. Cool. Oh, sorry, you're almost already over here. Good. And you guys are not that thick, which is kind of disappointing to be honest with you, but whatever. Um... We don't have enough guns, do we? No, we don't. Artillery-wise, what, what do we have up here? Honestly, at this point, cavalry brigades? Get some armor on you, maybe. What quadrupods do we have? Not a lot. At least get a little bit of armor first. That ain't much, but... I think those look really cool. Yeah, quadrupods. These guys move around first. I know we're working with the French and the Russians, and we're not really working with them, but you know, they we support the similar ideology. But still. Right, there go, those guys. They pieced out. Right, so be, of course, I think we don't have that much army, that much fuel and funding, too, but whatever. Did you piece out, too? No, you're still fighting. Yeah, I, get, I see why. The anti-Hungarian pact. Bombing, bombing, bombing! Nice. Quad pods. Roll out. A lot of pee pee. Oh, 100%, 100%, 100%. Nice. Uh, what else can we do? Anything here? Oh, is that more stuff down here? Yes. Way more army XP. Armor as well. The National Security Act. The MPP has brought peace, freedom, justice, and security of the United Kingdom and all of our mandates. To fully make some of this, we shall create the National Security Act, which will give the Prime Minister powers to bypass Parliament in emergency times for all good measure, of course. God save Britannia. Can they pierce our armor? Well, it's not even in, so. No, they cannot. Aiden and Garrison look really awesome with that armor, man. And there you go. We don't have any motorized, do we? Whoa. Goodbye, Mock League. Sorry for not helping you out, really. Pierce their armor, they can't pierce us. That's great. This guy, which is great. 34, 34, 34. Air stuff, fighters, yes, please. Who passes ours? That's great. Go up here. Struggle a little bit. Struggle. I'm becoming a panzer leader. I love it. 
Ormond addresses the nation. In a rousing speech before Parliament, Prime Minister Ormond introduced or produced evidence of the Workers' Union Party been planning a Jacobin coup against the government. The, the mere suggestion was, was thought inconceivable, but the Prime Minister offered detailed plans stolen from the party member Harry Putlet that indicated that Hardliners plan to oust the moderates and abolish the monarchy. The speech also sent Parliament into an uproar, where the Workers' Union MPs attempted to issue no confidence vote. Instead, however, they found themselves completely outvoted by Conservatives and the MPP now united in fury. The Union Party members stormed out of the House of Commons, stirring the room to an outpr- triumphant reactionary front. We're doing what needs to be done. I hope. Now, is that good, making a bigger Empire of Yugoslavia? A bunch of despots here? No. But I really don't like Jacobins. I really don't like Jacobins. There will be blood. In the aftermath of the Ormond Proclamation, the nation has been plunged into chaos. Oh, look at this. Street fights have broken up between the WUU... The WUP party members and NPP black shirts. In the midst of the chaos, multiple major members of the Workers' Union Party have been harassed, assaulted, or even assassinated. Among these, however, has been Clement Attlee. While returning home, Attlee was accosted by a group of armed thugs and gunned down in the streets of London sprawl. Attlee's death has caused a major breakdown of the party with Paula in custody for treason and Mosley nowhere to be found. We didn't even talk about Mosley at all so far. The Workers' Union Party found itself in crisis and Ormond's plan succeeded, although not quite as much as, not quite as she might have intended. It's to prove these trials in Christ. I need a drink. I mean, it's already at 100%, so. Matters of state. Imperial Confederation. Yeah, we're just moderately conservative. Great. Support from the right. On the wake of the near dissolution of the Workers' Union Party, the Tories and Whigs have offered their support to the Ormond's government. <clears throat> Ormond herself has taken the opportunity to propose the National Security Act, which could help stabilize the nation in this time of crisis. There's been criticism of the act for potentially giving the Prime Minister too many big powers. Along with the vaguely defined crisis, Ormond has shot down these criticisms, claiming that the Prime Minister must do everything in her powers to stabilize the nation. A surprise to be sure, but a welcome one. Ah, yes. I love it. Alright, next war we can get involved in, please. I want to get involved in more war. All three unions allowed. Nice. Rubber processing is not bad. Already, already, already. 34, almost 35. Piercing? Sure. Not for subsidies? Ah, why not? The Triumph of Will. As the last votes were finally tallied, it was becoming increasingly clear that Ormond's gamble finally paid off. It had been a long road to this moment, though the early years of the movement to the shock of the electoral victory. The MPP has always been envisioned as counter-revolutionary, yet by circumstance it would prove the opposite. With the first woman in the office of Prime Minister, a veteran of the Great War in her own right, and now the person who would plant the Union Jack in the black heart of the British Socialism. Cheers broke out among the MPs, Margison, no, nodding quietly as the Prime Minister's motion was confirmed. Eden sat down quietly off to the side, his eyes seemed duller, almost hollow. Mosley and Pollitt hadn't even attended the vote, the former too busy fighting off yet another union leadership vote, and the latter having seemingly banished from the public eye. Ormond herself stood triumphant, taking in the cheers and cheers of Parliament. With this motion, she now wielded a new set of emergency powers, powers of grant her the authority to finally put down the socialists for good, and permanently cement English patriotism as the law of the land, of course. Some concessions needed to be made, and if the Imperial League needed to be thrown under the trolley, then so be it. She could practically see the blood on her hands, but she didn't care. Britain's path to the future was bright, she would see to it. Britain's future lies with blood and iron. The National Pe- People's Party has come out victorious, the Workers' Union Party has been crushed, and Britain's security is forever sure, but at what cost? Nice. I guess patriotic propaganda, because we might as well. The new generation lost their way, and heritage due to the Workers' Party telling them to give up their idealistic stories of the Empire and embrace the scourge known as socialism. We should remind them as it is our duty of governance, that there is no shame in being proud of Nelson, Wellington, and Rhodes through propaganda. May they know the true glory of the Empire through the Great White Mother, and they, may they remember to be never be ashamed of their heritage. Um, anything else down here? Uh, I'll probably get one of these guys. Screw it. Why not? Uh, heavy land ships, infantry, more division, infantry division attack, defense, Mauser contracts, not bad. Um, synthetic oil, not bad. Ooh, division recovery rate two. I like that. But let's go with Mausers. Patriotic uh, education. So we'll be done with that tree, and then we have thirty-seven mill launches eventually. Uh, clause, support of boys. Armed forces reforms have started. Um, interesting. Heavy fighters. I'll probably go this way. Uh, bleeding edge armor developments, which sounds awesome. I kind of want to go that way. Perfecting conventional warfare. 
Well, we are reactionary. That makes more sense than using quadrupods, I guess, technically, but whatever. Conservatives, reinforce the capital fleet, carrier fleet. Well, we are going with carriers already, so we'll see. Britain forever has defeated France and Russia in the Second Great War. All right, and we got a lot of stuff here to do as well. And we can't do any of this. Oh, how's military government? The king's agenda. It's fully independent. What do you mean? Are we not fully independent? Complete recovery? Well, let's keep it on this way. Control the failed banks. Many banks have failed the British people, uh, such as Alexis of the Bank of Scotland, which controls their financial interests in Scotland and Northern Ireland. To prevent support for London, we shall uh, directly liquidate these banks and politically control them to secure interests across the British Isles, whether the people like it or not. Say capitalism. To prevent hard-earned government revenue being usurped from greedy profiteers, we should pursue a policy of state capitalism where the new government shall organize and run new and crucial businesses. This will allow the government to cash in on profits of the nation, however, force ourselves to lose the expertise of British businessmen, break the unions. Uh, the unions will provide shelter for the radical socialists, which are the dagger which threatens our cultural values. To prevent any re resistance to Britain and our rule, we will break the unions, which will be highly controversial but necessary to make sure we have complete power to create the best economic policies for Britain and the new economy. Our economic initiatives and transformation of a free market economy to a state economy has created the new British economy based on military construction and other needs based for our government. This has allowed us to create a stronger economy, providing jobs at lower wages while also compelling the British economy forwards. A true economic miracle is by our standards, of course. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. I'll also push on with the Pax Britannica mod and see what else this has in store for Imperial Britain. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.